everybody and welcome back to my channel. Uh, this week I a pretty exciting video for you guys. It's a photo walk where I try a film that I've never tried before. Never, never tried before. Never tried before. Some Ektar 100. I had a really fun time shooting this film. I recorded this video and shot the film, I'd say maybe three weeks ago. I've been really packed with exams. I'm a college student, so I've been pretty busy. Hence why I haven't uploaded YouTube videos in a second. So I apologize for that. Um, but if you want to catch more videos from me, by the way, they're on my TikTok. I upload sometimes more frequently, but after my exams are over this week, I'll be uploading more on here, so don't worry. But anyway, I had a really fun time shooting this, and um, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Also, if it seems a bit long, it's because at the second half of this video is me uh, basically doing a role review of this film, and I basically just go over the film uh, with you guys, but look at the pictures and everything. So if you're more interested in just seeing me walk around and take photos, watch the first half. You don't have to watch the whole thing, but I encourage you to watch the whole thing because I worked really hard on it, and I had a fun time just talking about it as well. But now I'm going to stop talking and let you guys watch the video. Anyway, here is my photo walk of shooting some XR100, and I'll see you at the end. All right, bye. So as you guys can see, it's a really beautiful day outside today. The sun is shining so nice. So I think I'm just gonna, I think I might take my bike. I don't know, I might walk, who knows. I think, actually, you know, walking may be better. Ride my bike may prevent me from being able to capture stuff. So let's start walking. So a little fun fact, every single time, bird, um, every single time I pass this house right here, I take a picture and I've been trying to get the perfect shot of it for so long because I just haven't been able to get one. But I think I'm gonna try again with this with this camera. Um, I'm gonna try to get this shot right here as you guys can see. Now as I'm walking, this angle looks good too, a bit closer. So I think I'm gonna get one more shot of it. Um, so let's do that. Beautiful. Man, I can't believe how nice it is today. Once again, this house is just so pretty. I'm always taking pictures of it. I kind of feel bad. At this point, it might be a little stalkery, but it's such a pretty house. All right, last pick of that house. As I said earlier, I've never shot 100 speed film, never shot Ektar before, um, but I know it's known for its really fine grain, so I'm excited to see if that rings true. Oftentimes, Especially with 35 millimeter, just some, when I use the cheaper films, you can definitely tell that the grain is not very fine. And sometimes it's cool. Sometimes it doesn't really matter, but when I'm trying to get like good landscape shots, it often can be a little annoying, so. I'm also enjoying doing this during the day. I've been doing a lot of night walks recently. I'm working on a photo project called Night Walk. At the moment where I walk around my neighborhood at night, I just take photos, but it's really nice going on in the day where I don't really have to worry about a tripod and I kind of just like can shoot on the go. This looks cool here, this shadow with the grass. That's like a bit to take. Mm. I might have to, it's really sunny today. <laughs> Just like a picture of that cute, that nice couple just wide on their bike. I wish I, I saw them earlier coming by with a dog in their bike, and I wish I got a picture of that, but I didn't. But I got a picture of them going away, so hopefully that turned out. There's a lot of people walking today. This I've taken this picture before during the night. but never during the day. I don't know if I want to take the same picture. Maybe up close though, the fence right here. I might take that right there. So in this point of the video, I stopped talking directly to the camera because I realized maybe I should just take some photos and not talk so much. 
Uh, so from this point on, I don't really talk a lot when I'm taking the photos. I'm just kind of taking them. So from here on out, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this. And I'll talk to you guys more when I do the final roll review at the end. All right, see you then. So you guys just watched me walk around my neighborhood shooting some Ektar 100, the film that I'd never shot before and the speed film that I'd also never shot before. Um, I'm here now to share my thoughts. I thought we're gonna head over to my computer in just a second and I'm gonna go over some of my favorite images that I got uh, with y'all and just share my thoughts on, you know, how the film reacted to the settings and, you know, all that certain stuff. But just some initial reactions I'd like to say here is that um, I was really, really pleased with the film, especially with the fine grain. Um, it does say world's finest grain on that package and I think it definitely lived up to that. Uh, when I went in to, you know, start shooting this film, I was really looking for something that would provide you with, you know, good color profile, but also some fine grain. Um, I've been shooting a lot of daytime landscapes and just daytime stuff with Kodak Ultramax, which is a 400 speed film, um, and it's one I've talked about a lot on my social medias and stuff. I just really like the film, I love the co color profile of it, um, but I use it a lot when I'm doing, like, personal photos. I do it, I use it a lot with my point and shoot cameras. I go out with friends and, you know, it's just casual photos and not really anything that's gonna be considered part of my work, my portfolio or anything like that, so I use that a lot. But even in my portfolio, I've used this film a lot as well, and it's turned out great, and I've been pretty happy with it. 
Um, but the thing with, you know, daytime landscape stuff I found is that the 4SP film is a little bit too grainy for me and I wanted something that could provide me with the same detail, same color profile that's accurate to what I was shooting, but still had a nice fine grain. And I'm happy to say that this film is really, really great. I was really pleased and surprised with how it handled the colors of the day and a lot of the photos really just look true to life is what I shot. Um, if you guys just look in the video that you just saw, I mean, a lot of the footage of me shooting it looked pretty much identical slash pretty similar to what the film captured. So I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Um, once again, I shot this uh, with my Minolta X700. It's my trusty 35mm SLR. It has a 50mm 1.7 lens on it. It's pretty fast. Um, and yeah, I just love how the film and this camera work together and provided some cool images. And uh, speaking of the images, I think I'm going to head over to the computer now where I have all the images pulled up and we'll just take a look at some of my favorite ones that I got and we'll talk a little bit more about the film. So let's go do that. Okay, so now I just want to go over some of my favorite images that I got and uh, just talk a little bit more about uh, what I liked about the film, what I didn't like, and uh, just some more thoughts on the film itself. So I think I'll start with one of my favorite photos that I got during this walk, which was a shot of this goal, goal post thing. I think it's either lacrosse or maybe soccer, I'm not really sure what sport it's for, but I really enjoyed in this photo how the greens were handled, especially in the grass. Um, you know, sometimes I find it hard in, in when I'm taking photos of grass, there's a lot of greenery, the greens can sometimes just be either, you know, too yellowy, too bluey, they can never, I can never get them to look um, exactly how I want them. I think they're very true to life. If you look in uh, the footage here, it looks pretty much the same as how the camera captioned. I really enjoyed that. Um, I really like this photo mainly because of the greens. Next, I'll go to the first photo that I took during the shoot, which was of the house that I talked about that I really wanted to get a good picture of. Um, and I was really pleased with how the picture of the house um, turned out with this film. But what I love in about this film that's really showcased in these photos of the house is how you know, how fine the grain is, especially in that sky. If you just zoom in on this sky here and just kind of go up right here, you can see that the sky is almost filled with like no grain. Like you can tell it's a little bit, but it's really not noticeable, especially if you're just looking at it without zooming in. Um, and compare it, I already did in the video a little bit, if you compare it to some of the skies um, when shooting, you know, 400 speed film or higher, you can definitely tell the grain is a lot more present. But I just love how almost silky and kind of milky the sky almost looks because of the fine grain. Um, I will admit though that the blues in the sky were a little bit hard to get true to life just because when I scanned it and uh, converted it with Negative Lab Pro, which is a Lightroom extension I use to get the color profiles to be converted like labs do, um, you know, the blues weren't as blue as I would have liked them to be. It was a little bit grayish washed out even though it definitely was not if you look in the footage. So I had to do a little bit of um, post editing just in um, altering a little bit of the tones and stuff, but I didn't do anything major really. Overall, I'm pretty happy with that photo as well. Now I wanted to show this photo just to kind of highlight how the film handles a little bit of overexposure. Um, as you can see in this photo, the original, when I first scanned it, it was pretty overexposed in the highlights. If you look in the triangle of the house, it was really bright when I took that and I think I overexposed it by mistake. Um, but when I did kind of bring those highlights down, it kind of turned a little bit of yellow and I had a bit of trouble getting the highlights to look neutral and also not too bright um, with this photo. So I wasn't totally happy with this, it's not my favorite. I think also the, the reds are a little bit too pink as I mentioned a bit. I think the film, um, it could have been the day, maybe it's the film, I don't know. I've only shot it once so I don't really know. Um, but the pinks or the reds seem to be handled a little bit more pink than I would like and I have to kind of adjust that in post. Um, but you know, just in general, this was mostly my fault with the overexposure but I just wanted to show how it kind of handled that. Um, I had a little bit of difficulty kind of getting that photo to look right and I'm still not too completely happy with it, but you know what, it's fine. So these photos of my hose in my backyard, I really enjoyed, especially this one of the hose on the ground with the grass. I think the greens were handled really well. I'm gonna keep saying that, you'll see me saying it over and over, but the greens were handled pretty nicely in this photo. The one thing I would say is I had a lot of trouble getting this rope, the, the um, what's it called, the hose to look the correct color. Um, I think that, you know, it ended up being a little bit pink by the film and I had to kind of adjust a little bit. Even now you can look and it's a bit too pink. I think I might even edit it a bit more. Um, but once again, I think that the colors in this film in general are very vibrant and nice. And I like how the film handled uh, the greens and the reds in this. So it is a little bit pink, but it's fine. And then if we look at the picture of the hose from far away, I really enjoy how this picture in particular, the film handled with the whites. The whites are really nice and neutral. They're also kind of pastel in a way, and I really like that. The grass, once again, is handled pretty nicely. The rope is, in this picture, it's a little more orange, but still pretty pink. Um, but I do enjoy how it handled that. And even the shadows, um, the darker parts of here with this window, even captured the detail inside of that window, um, even though that could have easily been underexposed. And I really enjoy how 
um, it kind of got everything in there, so that was nice. This is also one photo that I really like. Um, in this photo, the sun wasn't too harsh in this area. It was kind of, um, the sun was not really setting, but it was definitely less harsh than when I first went out. Um, but I really like how this, um, this picture, how it handled like the darker parts of this orange box behind it, but still kept the nice, like, lighter parts of it in front. Um, and I just like the overall tones that it got of this photo, and it really is pretty accurate to what I saw in real life. Um, the tones, the, the grasses, the leaves, and the, you know, this little, this little pump thing, whatever it is, um, they weren't too colorful, and the film did a good job of just, you know, that's how it looked in real life, so, yeah. I also really love this photo of this car with this tree in its house, especially because of the shadow that the tree is casting on the house over here. I think it's really cool, and I really enjoyed that. Once again, the grain in the sky is literally like almost unnoticeable. It looks completely smooth and I really, really love that. Um, the shadows, there's not really a lot of grain in the shadows. There's not a lot of crushed um, darks down there. Um, it looks pretty fine to me. Uh, the grass is handled well, of course, as I will always say. The white in the car is pretty, pretty good. I mean, the, the car is stark white and it looks stark white in the photo. Um, but yeah, I really like this photo as well. So the last photo I'll talk about is this photo of this car in its driveway. Um, as you can tell here, the shadows are a little bit on the blue side. I didn't really fix them because I didn't mind it in this photo. Um, once again, I really like how the car is very white as I talked about in the other picture of the car. Um, but the whites were handled pretty nicely in the, in the highlights area. Um, it's pretty a neutral white, not too tinted in any way. The shadows once again are a little bit blue. Um, but besides that, I really like this photo and just the different um, the shadows and the highlights and how they come together, especially on the car there. Um, and I think it looks pretty fine. I really like this photo. So, um, yeah. So I think those are all the photos that I want to talk about. Um, where's, my, where's my film canister? I don't know. So I think those are all the photos that I want to talk about with this roll of Ektar. Uh, once again, just final thoughts, I've kind of already said. It's a really great film. I was really pleased with how fine the grain was, especially in the sky areas. A lot of times when I take photos, the skies can be uh, the kind of the source of where you see a lot of the grain, just because it's a lot of empty space where you're able to see either the darks um, really crushed. You see those that grain, or even the highlights may be a little bit overexposed, and you can still see the grain, you know? Um, but overall, I really like the color profile of the film. I like how it hands with the colors and kind of kept everything true to life. So I think I'm definitely gonna be shooting a lot more of this. If you've never tried it, I would definitely recommend it. It's definitely a pretty popular film. It's nothing that I've discovered and I'm showing you guys, but um, I hope you guys found this helpful and enjoyable. Um, I will be posting and filming more photo walks pretty soon. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys liked this video and I hope this was helpful. So yeah, I think that's all for now. I'm Natasha, I'm a film photographer and um, that's all for me for now. If you wanna check out more stuff from me, I make a lot of film tutorials on the TikTok. They're about one minute long. They're pretty helpful, I think. I also post all of my photo work on Instagram, my website, my Twitter, so you can follow me there if you'd like to see that. But besides that, I think that's all for now. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you next time. All right, bye.